Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to be taking a look at a brand new update. Yes, another one to Yuzu Emulator. This one hopes to fix many, many issues in relation to timing and speed of many, many games. This update has also dramatically boosted performance in quite a few games. One such game you're seeing right now on screen, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. In previous videos of mine, you would have seen that in some situations, yes, I was able to get 60 frames per second, for example, in the interiors of houses or in some dungeons, but for the most part, in open world areas, just like you're seeing here, I was generally being in and around 30 to 35, sometimes maybe 40 frames per second. Thanks to this brand new core timing update, this has boosted my performance from said previous of 40 frames per second all the way up to 60, and if I indeed unlocked my frame rate, I would be getting much, much higher performance. Now, Pokemon Let's Go still has stability issues, and while this core timing change has improved stability, at least to some extent, for example, my game is no longer crashing every 40 to 45 seconds, it still does crash quite a lot though, though using this update, I have been able to do a lot more testing of this game on this emulator. To give you an example of how much this ability has improved, at least for me in my own experience, I was able to play this game for 40 to 45 minutes in this area in the open world near Route 1 and my game didn't crash at all. That's not to say that the crashing is completely fixed, I'm just saying that it's a little bit more stable and obviously since it has a small bit of added stability, it's going to be a little bit easier to play for you. Having said that, it is still 110% recommended that you save your game as often as possible, especially so directly before or directly after any battles you may have in game. Now, there are literally dozens upon dozens of games that have improved in a very similar fashion to Pokemon Let's Go, both in relation to stability, performance, and some games, as you saw in my previous two videos for Yuzu Emulator, have massively graphically improved. Before we move on and take a look at any more games that have improved drastically in this update, I want to ask each and every one of you to head on over to the Yuzu Patreon, and if you can in any way, please pledge your support to these awesome developers so that they can continue the amazing work they have been doing in the last year or so. As always in these topical videos, you'll find the link to the Yuzu Patreon down in the description of this video. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a quick comparison between the previous Canary builds and the latest ones we have right now. Okay, so this is Bayonetta 2 running in a previous Canary version, and as you can very clearly see, thanks to many graphical optimizations and many performance improvements, it is running very, very well. However, you will also notice that this 60 frames per second game, which is a 60 frames per second game, is running at two times speed when it should only be running at one times speed at 60 frames per second. This is obviously a fairly large oddity and something that the developers of this emulator had to contest with. It's especially so odd when you consider that the game audio is at one times speed when played at this two times speed in actual gameplay movement. Jumping across to the latest Canary version at time of making this video, we can now see that they have completely fixed all of the timing issues in Bayonetta 2, meaning that not only does this game now correctly run at 60 frames per second, but its audio playback is also absolutely perfect when running at 60 frames per second. You can also tell by the chapter I'm currently playing in right now that Bayonetta 2 is very, very playable. Now, it does still have some crashing issues and some soft locking issues, but thanks to a very, very frequent and generous auto saving system in Bayonetta 2, this game is not very frustrating to play, at least not to the degree that Pokemon Let's Go is. Performance wise, it's also very, very good. If you guys saw my last few videos in which I covered it, it was running well over 100 frames per second and well over 200 frames per second in some situations, which means that on a much lower tiered systems than my own 8700K based system, it is going to run at very, very respectable performance indeed. Let's move on to our next game and another one many of you guys should be very, very familiar with. Let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So, as we discussed in previous videos of mine, even when locking the game to 30 frames per second in previous Yuzu Canary versions, the game's speed was just completely wrong and sped up, just like you can see in my gameplay comparison footage right now. 
Jumping across into this latest Yuzu Canary version, you can see that thanks to these core timing changes, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, when locked to 30 frames per second, is now running absolutely perfectly at the correct speed it's meant to. For anybody who missed my previous two videos, you may also not be aware of the fact that in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Yuzu, they have completely fixed pretty much all of the physics interactions that happen in gameplay. These interactions include, but are not limited to, usage of runes, so for example Magnesis like you can see in gameplay right now, the fact that Link was able to swim in and interact with the water like you previously just saw. If any of you guys want to check out my previous video in which I covered any and all of these changes to Splatoon 2, Super Mario Odyssey and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on the top of many many other games, I will link my previous video down in the description of this video, so please head on over there and check that one out. For now, we're going to be continuing with this compatibility update where we're going to be taking a look at Octopath Traveler. As with the last two games we've taken a look at, Octopath Traveler has seen a significant boost in compatibility on this Switch emulator. Its menu performance alone has at least doubled in this update and as you can see in my movement of this cursor, it no longer completely bugs out and moves at about 15 or 20 times the speed. Similarly to the speed we were seeing in the previous menus, you can also see that in these selection menus for each of our heroes, I am now able to successfully and easily select any one of them that I wish. Loading between any and all of these screens is also now instantaneously done. You can see when I click continue game, it instantly brings me into the next menu instead of having to wait between 15 and 25 seconds. Something that shocked me when I loaded into gameplay myself was the fact that this game is now, to some extent at least, rendering 3D graphics in gameplay. Obviously it is in no way perfect and you can see that pretty much none of the graphics are rendered in the correct areas, however you can see that some are, for example this pillar on the right hand corner of our screen. You could technically play through the game like this if you have a very good memory. In a very similar circumstance to the open world or dungeon areas when you get into any of these battle scenes, some of the game assets are correctly rendered, for example the UI and many of the effects that happen when you perform any of the actions in combat. Having spoken to one of the main 3D developers for Yuzu Emulator, he has told me that debugging this game is now going to be probably 1000 times easier now that it is running at its correct speed like you can see in gameplay right now. Now that debugging this game has become even easier, hopefully we'll see even more graphical improvements to this in the coming weeks. Octopath Traveler is probably one of my most hyped games to see running in an awesome fashion on this emulator, so I hope it can be fixed very, very soon. Moving on to our next game, once again it is yet another title that many of you guys have requested to be tested on this emulator, let's take a look at Kirby Star Allies. Again, thanks to these core timing and timing changes in general, Kirby Star Allies has now received at least a 2 or 3 times boost in performance. Now, it does have this very weird graphical bug where you can see along the top border and right hand side border of the screen, the graphics are not blurred but for the most part in our gaming window the graphics are really really blurry. This is just a bug that I thought I'd point out and hopefully some talented developer that's already working over at Yuzu could figure out exactly why this is happening. Regardless of this, it's pretty awesome to see that Kirby Star Allies has moved from running at around 20 to 25 frames per second to anywhere between around 40 and 60 frames per second in gameplay in pretty much every single gameplay circumstance. Now Kirby Star Allies still does suffer with several graphical bugs, the first one we looked at was the blur and the second one is the fact that some of these secondary characters have weird blacked out graphics like this. I'm not exactly sure what causes this bug but hopefully it's going to be fixed sooner rather than later and then Kirby Star Allies when paired with the performance boosts we've seen in this version of this emulator is going to be very very playable both from a performance standpoint and also from a visual standpoint. As I said at the start of this video there are dozens upon dozens of games that have seen performance improvements and also speed and timing improvements in this brand new build. Let's take a look at even more of these improvements in the awesome 2D platformer Celeste. As with many games on this emulator, this game, even when locked to 60 frames per second, was running at about 10 to 15 times its game speed, which basically made it completely unplayable. Obviously it's still not rendered perfectly, at least in this opening menu area, but you can see once we load into live gameplay, it is rendering very very well, despite the fact that some of its imagery in the background is still rendered upside down. 
Regardless of these upside down rendering issues, this game is now considered fully playable from start to finish thanks to these brand new timing changes. Let's move along once again and take a look at yet another 2D style game, this time let's take a look at Stardew Valley. So to show you exactly how much this game has improved, we're first going to have to take a look at a previous Yuzu Canary version, where if you take a look at the timer in the top right hand corner of the window, you can see exactly what the problem with speed and timing in this game was. For anybody who's never played Stardew Valley before or who's not aware of how it works, this game is basically 100% reliant on having an accurate clock since the entire gameplay loop is based on timing. Jumping across into this brand new Canary version, not only can you see that the clock is now moving perfectly accurately to how it moves on the Nintendo Switch, but gameplay is also now at one time speed and is absolutely perfectly playable. What you can see in gameplay in Stardew Valley right now in comparison to what you saw in the older Canary version is a perfect representation of exactly how much this new update has improved this emulator. Many games that were previously running way too fast, some very similarly to Octopath Traveler were running so fast that it was basically impossible to debug or fix any of their issues, and now thanks to this brand new timing or core timing update, whatever you want to call it, are now able to be properly debugged and fixed. One such game that was previously running way too fast in a very similar fashion to Stardew Valley was this game right here, a Golf Story. As with Stardew, this game would run at probably 10 or 15 times its game speed, basically making it completely impossible, especially so when you consider that, again, this gameplay loop in this game is entirely dependent on timing. This game is now running at one times speed and one times audio speed with absolutely perfect synchronization between both. And as I've already said a few times in this video, there are dozens upon dozens of games that are now considered perfectly playable, both from a graphical and speed perspective just like Golf Story and Stardew Valley, truly hammering home just how awesome the developers of this emulator really are. They have shown time and time again, not only with big singular updates, but also with consistent progress that they are 100% capable and dedicated to the task of making this Nintendo Switch emulator. Again, I'm going to ask any and all of you guys that if you have any means to do so, please head on over to the Patreon link down in the description of this video and pledge your support to these developers. That's about it for this compatibility and progress update for Yuzu Emulator. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.